Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is the final wrap-up video of the latest house that I've uh, got ready to rent and I want to go ahead and show you all of the progress that I made and uh, just show you one more time and talk about all the steps that it took to get this place ready. First thing I'm going to do is show you the view. It is October 30th today, so we're getting some nice color in the leaves. All people would like to see it. This is also a view of the field. It just recently got bush hogged, most of the field at least. Thinking about cutting this tree right here down. It's kind of scraggly looking. So there's not a whole lot uh, to look at that's uh, any eyesores as far as this. There's a house right here, and then there's a house across the road over here. But other than that, it's just a nice view and a big pretty sky. But back to the house. There's the house. And again, it's going to have new gutters put on it. So right now, temporarily have these black pipes run to get the water weight away from the foundation. And then once the new gutters are put in, I will bury some pipe that goes off to the side and one that goes down through the yard and dumps off down here. But um, not a whole lot had to be done on the outside of the house. The only thing that really was done on the outside of the house that... Uh, affects anything is I upgraded the electric. So it's got a, the new weather head on the mast and then the new meter base and then the conduit that goes down and through the basement. So that is the first thing that was a uh, major thing that was done in the house was an electrical service upgrade. It had a 100 amp service and now it has a 200 amp service. reason I did that is just for all of the modern things that are in the house. There's a lot of uh, electric consumption, as well as I installed a heat pump. And in that heat pump, it has electric heat, which requires a 200 amp electric service. Um, that's the ground coming out. So in the electrical videos that I've already posted, you know, I've got the two ground rods. I had no idea that two ground rods were gonna be required, but that is the modern code for the county that this house is in. And the city where my other houses are at don't have to do that. Or at least it didn't have to do it the last time I did one and I've done a service upgrade fairly recently. As far as the heat pump goes, there it is. Here's the outdoor unit. And right now I've got that tarp and the piece of metal down to where since there's no gutters, all the water just dumps off the back and carves this big deep trench that's about six inches deep so I've got that just where it doesn't wash the dirt out and then once the gutters are in place won't have that water pouring over the edge and I'll get in here and I'll smooth all this out so that's gonna happen while the tenant is in here and hopefully that person does decide to move in if they move in they're moving in in two days but it's just sort of some last-minute decisions being made on their end um, just for some reference there are the buildings I've got some stuff stored in this one this tobacco drying unit is just wide open now, and I'll be stacking some lumber on a concrete pad that's up there as well. Here's the view out back. Pretty much the same as it was before. The only thing I've done is I've gone around in the woods, and any kind of trash that's visible, I picked it up. There's still a lot of glass bottles and random little things laying on the ground, but there was like pieces of sheet plastic laying around. I just cleaned up anything that's... Uh, you can see um, the only thing I have to move still is two gal uh, it's about a 55 and a 35 gallon drums up there completely full of motor oil. Those need to be removed. But one of them doesn't have a lid that you can tighten down, so I need to do that without getting it everywhere. So we're entering in through the kitchen. There's a lock box. The, um, this house I'm gonna rent it out using a rental management company. They charge 10% of whatever you rent the house for. This house will rent for about $1,000, so they are going to get about $100 per month off of my rent, so that's fine. All I'm trying to do is cover the mortgage payment on this house. I'm not interested. I mean, I would love to make some money, but that wasn't the goal with this house. I just wanted to obtain it and then let someone else basically buy it for me. Um, the only thing that's gonna happen when we're walking around in here is you're gonna hear the uh, um, Fire alarms chirping, just gonna have to deal with that. So we are here in the dining room portion of the kitchen. It's a pretty big room. You see where I'm standing. So it's got a lot of room for a pretty large table. You could have an eight, eight foot long dining room table. I really like the layout of the kitchen. It is a dated 
uh, house in general, but it is in perfect condition, and in that, I like it. If it was dated and looked like crap, I, it wouldn't be all that cool, but the whole house is in such good condition that I think it's kind of appealing. Um, you have access over into the main living room, and so all the walls have been painted white. They were just different colors and kind of dingy, but most of the walls were the original paint in the house, and the house was built in, I believe, 1967. Um, it still had the original finish on the floor as well. So I came in and sanded the floors down lightly and just repolyurethaned them, uh, repolyurethaned them. So you can still see some kind of splotchiness from staining underneath, but all I was doing was just wanting to protect the floors. I wasn't worried about uh, completely refinishing them. I just wanted to put new finish down. So I just did that little initial scuff coat. Let's get back to the kitchen. I did recently test the propane wall heaters and they are in perfect condition. They just light like a grill. You just turn them on and just push that clicker there. But they have valves under them to turn them off. There's a valve on the outside, then a valve on the tank. All the valves are off right now. Um, with the kitchen, it has this. I believe that's called a peninsula. It sticks out. A little shelf on the end that's cool. It's kind of undercut at an angle to where when you're sitting there with stools, the, you have room for your feet and your legs. I installed new appliances. Normally, I would go on Craigslist and just buy used stuff, but... I just didn't have time to deal with that, and so I just went to Lowe's and bought all new appliances. Total cost for the appliances was about $1,100, $1,200. That included the refrigerator, the stove, and the dishwasher. Still need to pull the protective plastic off of the dishwasher. I'm just leaving it on there for now, and I need to screw the handles onto the refrigerator. The, but everything is working. Everything's in good working order in the kitchen. Um, yeah, I've cooked a couple frozen pizzas in that oven while working on it. I think that's pretty much it for the kitchen. There's the hallway. Everything's looking good. Good paint. Thermostat located right here, central area, so it's going to pick up a pretty even temperature throughout the house. That's why you don't do something like put a thermostat in a bedroom with a door. Bedroom number, really it's, I call this the third bedroom, but... This is the one that the owners of the house slept in. It's the smallest bedroom. They offered the bigger bedrooms to their children. All these people are grown up. The children are 60 years old now. And I really like this house a lot. I mean, it really is. It's just, it's solid. It really is well built. Um, I like that it has the wood trim that has not been painted. I went around and kind of lightly sanded the trim work wherever it was a little bit um, messed up and put some new um, shellac on them. All the woodwork in the house has been shellac. I thought it was polyurethane at first, but it's not. So I just came back in with some amber, poly, uh, amber shellac and shellac the window stools and then a couple areas on the trim that needed it. So not everything is perfect. Um, there's a little bit of damage you can see or darkening in the windows. That's because they're single pane and that's condensation runs down and it's just stained up the windows a little. It does have storm windows which will help a little bit but it can still happen. Um, that is access to the shower on the other side. Then on the wall you can see an outlet bo box for the washer, uh, washing machine, a drain for a drain pan and then the vent for a, um, the dryer. I moved the dryer wire down into the basement and then I'm really I'm not, probably just going to cap off those and put something over that uh, because in the future I may want to set this back up as kind of a laundry room or a multiple, a multiple purpose you know, room of some sort. In the bathroom that pretty much stayed exactly the same except for the shower. Uh, I added the shower board in the two shower rods, curtain rods, and I chipped out all the caulk. All the caulking was rock hard and it had kind of like green coppery looking water stains on it. So I chipped it all out with a screwdriver and then siliconed everything uh, back to a nice waterproof state. So I didn't even paint the walls in here. Um, no changes to any of the plumbing or anything like that. Here's this bedroom. This is the biggest bedroom. This is the one I would want if it was uh, if I was going to live here myself. 
because you get a view of the front of the house. You also get a view from the side. So those are the two best views looking out of the window. And then here you get to see this view and it all looks pretty nice. And the sky really is really nice here at nighttime. This one has the biggest closet in this room. Little cloak coat closet. This is looking from the other side of the living room. So, nice thing about this living room is that it faces the front of the house. So again, you get this view and you get this extra large window. That whole window is about 10 feet long, um, nine, 10 feet long. So you get a big, nice, pretty view. That's one reason I kind of want to get rid of this little ugly tree. It just looks like a big bush. It's just too straggly. Only thing is, this is the only place around this house that gets shade at any point of the day. So what I may do is I may just kind of go in there and just shape up the tree just a little bit because somebody might want to just put a little chair or something and sit down there. Otherwise, you're basically sitting in the middle of a field, uh, which is pretty hot. Um, another wall heater and I also replaced all of the wall plates. Um, so all of this, of course, you've already seen, but I'm just doing kind of a final update. And sometimes people, this will be the first video they see, so they might want to go back in and see some of that work being done. Last place to visit is the basement. Nice steep set of stairs that comes right to the wall. I need to get all the lights flipped on real quick. But the basement in this house is really cool. And some people may say, well, what are you talking about? What makes it so cool? For me, that light's not working. For me, it's the fact that it's an unfinished basement that's wide open. I really like that. You could do all kinds of stuff down here. You could make it into a big playroom if you had kids. You could make it into a workshop. Ping pong tables, pool tables. You know, there's all kinds of things you could do down here. It's plenty of room. This is a 1,200 square foot basement, the full size of the house. Well, the house is over 1,200 square feet, but close to 1,200, uh, thereabouts. There's the new breaker box, all the new wiring. Well, it's not new wiring, it's old wiring pulled in, and the pressure tank for the well. I added the whole house water filter, changed the plumbing just a little bit to accommodate that, and ran a piece of liquid tight over to the switch, um, pressure switch. So as far as the whole house filter, the other thing I did outside is I replaced or pulled the well pump up to see how deep the well was and then I also uh, replaced the well seal and then shocked the well with bleach two times um, just to make sure that everything was clean and did bacteria tests. Um, hot water tank had to replace the pressure relief valve that's the one with that yellow tag sticking off of it that was the slow drip into the floor um, so I replaced that and then really this water tank is going to need to probably be replaced within the next couple of years. It's already sort of past its time, but uh, most likely to be okay at least for a couple more years. I'll get in here and replace it sooner or later before something goes wrong. Um, this is the indoor unit for the heat pump. So this is all electric for those of you not familiar with heat pumps. So it does the cooling and the heating, both electric and then it has emergency backup heat, which is basically these elements that are inside that. There's two of them, they turn on, they glow red like a toaster, and air blows past them. If, you, if your heat pump will not satisfy the desired temperature within a given amount of time, they kick on, or if there's too big of a gap between the air temperature of what the house is and what you want, they'll kick on. Um, and so heat pumps do have their limitations, but this is a brand new modern heat pump and the gases that it uses uh, can achieve um, uh, just they're more efficient at lower temperatures than the pa in the past. I added one small uh, return here to where it can pull some of the air out of the basement to treat the air, keep the humidity down, keeps the ba basement fresher. And then this right here is a condensation pump. So when you are cooling in the summertime, the, it's you're pulling air past the coil inside of the air conditioner. The coil sort of looks like a radiator in a car, so it's very cold fluid is going through the uh, coil, air passes through it, cools the air, and then that goes in your house. But that air has moisture in it, humidity in it. When it goes over that coil, it condensates, and then it drips down into a pan, and then runs down into this box. And then when this box hits a certain amount of water gets in it, it's pumped out of the house through a little clear tube. Otherwise, uh, if you check your basements or wherever your heat pumps are, 
you'll see that there's a drain. There's a piece of PVC pipe that goes through your floor, or if you're in a basement, it'll go over to a floor drain. I don't have a floor drain in this basement, so it is pumped outside. Um, I added in the stuff for a washer over here, changed this around to where the washing, uh, the uh, wastewater out of the washing machine can drain into the waste lines. And I, originally the water line came down through here and into the bathroom, but underneath the floor. So I changed all that up because it was leaking. So from here over, it is new PEX. All the rest of this was existing PEX that ties into the copper lines in the house. And the change was I dropped the uh, plumbing in through the ceiling because I didn't want to drill holes through anything. Because in the future, I may end up living here myself and I may want to change things up. So I wanted to do it um, everything in the least impactful way as possible. So I just did all the plumbing on the surface. It comes in. I drop these lines down here. One runs over to supply the toilet. The other two, but splits off, goes to the cold, and then the other one is warm. Hot water. So the other two come across and down into the shower. So this is my favorite shower. This would be my bathroom if I lived here. Uh, my father-in-law has a garage, ba uh, a bathroom in his garage, and this is a detached garage. And it's the same kind of thing. It's the man bathroom. And I love this thing. Um, it's just like a locker room or something. Uh, I wouldn't dare take a shower upstairs. And the cool thing is, is this bathroom was made for that purpose. It, uh, the people who lived here were tobacco farmers that built, the, built this house. So they could just come right in, take your filthy bath down here, your shower, and then go upstairs. You never have to come in your house all super nasty. And when you're doing tobacco work, it is all very... It's very dirty work. You're in the fields, in the dirt. Tobacco is just messy to fool with in general. So that is the basement. One of my favorite rooms in the house. I guess the last thing we'll do, we're at 17 minutes. We'll try to make this a full 20 minute miniature. Hope it's isn't too boring, but it's a whole lot of work and it's nice to kind of reflect on it um, a little bit. This is sort of the back way. The well is right there, just for reference again. So this is the well that I pulled up and pulled the whole uh, pump out. We'll go over here. And so that's pretty much the whole house. I don't think I'm leaving anything out. Propane tank. And it is, uh, it's cool because it's about, it's almost completely full. And they didn't fill it up for me or anything. It was just what happened just happened to be pretty much full and the uh, way the rental management company works is, is they take a picture of the meter and uh, um, when the person moves out they have to fill it back up to the level that it was when they moved in or they get charged for it so whenever I come back to this place if I ever move in myself which I hope I do um, I'll have a full tank of propane all right, so here's the barn, well, the barn, and then this is the tobacco storage building. So in here, I'm going to, I use it, I'm just going to use it for whatever, but for now, I've been using it to park my trailer with whatever I have on it, and then I also have my old Jeep here. It has nothing to do with houses, but I'm just kind of showing the building and kind of what I'm going to use it for in the future, which just really excites me because I really like this whole piece of land, the house and everything. But as soon as you run a house, I mean, you still own it, but it's, you no, no longer have uh, access to it. And after working on it and stuff, it's kind of fun. I have um, it's a couple different houses that no one lives in right now. And I'll just be driving around town, have to go to the bathroom, and I'll stop at a house that I own and go to the bathroom. And then it's just because it's more convenient than driving to my house or pulling in some uh, uh, um, restaurant or something like that. So small advantage of having a house, nothing compared to uh, the value of renting it. It's better to have it rented than just to have it be a bathroom that you use on occasion. But uh, I like the fact that I'm still going to have access to this property in general, and I have these buildings here that I can keep stuff in and do stuff in. So right now they're very rough looking, but some of the changes that I'm going to do to these, and I'll either post that, these videos may end up on this channel, but I may do them on the Homestead Craftsman channel since this may be more... Uh, 
up that alley. But uh, the um, this is a big sliding door, slides to right there where the track ends. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a regular door here, but it's going to go all the way. So once it shuts from the inside, I'll put a peg that goes down to the ground, maybe top and bottom. That will lock that door, and then this one will go over to it, and they will have some sort of big latch and a uh, lock of some sort. Um, on the inside, there will also be just some changes to the outside of this building as well just to make sure it is uh, in good condition. Right now I have my 1954 CJ3B project in here and it looks rough but I'm just in the middle of restoring it. Behind it I have a hard top for the Jeep and then behind all that I have this trailer and I am pretty sure it is a Willys MBT. This is a house channel, so people probably don't care about me talking about any of this. And then I also have some stacks of uh, slabs of wood. Then I have a whole bunch of reclaimed wood here. And this is a bunch of reclaimed heart pine. And with this, I would like to use this to make furniture and do different interior work in a house. So that's up the uh, alley of Full and With Houses. This all came out of a big, um, huge building. It was actually a big playhouse. So this was the house or it was like an apartment above the entire theater so it was just in a big theater where plays happened and different events and speakers came and it was being renovated and I ended up with all this uh, wood that was being replaced. Um, changes I'm going to make in this building I'm going to pull down all these fluorescent light fixtures and put new ones up and then I'm probably going to drop some outlets down and put them on the walls and then all this would be powered off my generator. I have a little small portable very quiet generator and it would run all these lights plus receptacles for any kind of small hand power tools so uh, in the future I want to park a tractor in here not this one a different one with a bush hog for maintaining the field and the driveway and any areas that I need to bush hog um, my family owns the land across the road and um, so there's different trails and stuff that go all through the woods so that can be used for bush hogging those trails um, too but I want to be able to get in here and work on stuff if I have to. And running my generator is super quiet and it's great on gas. So I could be here all day long running it and you're really not using that much gas. Um, but that would be pretty neat to have this place that I can kind of, uh, I'm not, probably won't really work on stuff like this. But if you get in here and you need to change the oil in your tractor, that kind of work. Um, so that's that as far as that building goes. This just looks like looking into the back of a tractor trailer body. And then I've got this pad of concrete over here where there was a second one of these buildings. And there was, where were we at? Over there near that light pole that you can see, there was a travel trailer, just a pop-up travel trailer, pop-up camper, whatever you call them. So I ripped the top of that off and now I've got this little trailer here. So I want to get the uh, new tires on this or something. I'm just going to deck this whole thing out and have it be a uh, little trailer that I just use around this place for um, or maybe even on the road for lawnmowers but I also want to put that water tank on there and have it be a mobile pressure washing thing. I end up with situations where I want to pressure wash off logs and stuff so I'm going to probably have this set up as a mobile pressure washer. I'm also going to use this pad for stacking more lumber like this in the future um, and then I even have a fantasy of potentially clearing out over behind this building and setting up some sort of a tiny house situation over behind here and there's already an electric pole here with a meter base and the wire runs overhead so you could I could easily just have um, I'd probably replace this uh, breaker panel here with a newer one but you could use that same meter base pop the meter in and then have power for these buildings plus the tiny house and then there's also a well. So that, that well is powered off of this. I've turned that well and tested it with a generator. I, I kind of temporarily rigged up electricity to this with a generator and powered that well and everything is in working order. So I think this is the perfect place for it. And the cool thing is, and I'm going to clean up all this too. All these like trees anyway that are in between all these buildings. All that's going to cut down because they're just going to end up falling down and poking holes through the roofing. Your tiny house would be sitting right here. And it'd be just be a neat thing to maybe do for a couple years and in between houses that I'm buying and renovating. And uh, one thing is, is when you 
um, have been renovating houses. The house that you live in, even though you like it, like in my case, I've got a shop in my basement that I make projects in and have fun. I still kind of think of my house as a missed opportunity. I think of it, well, I could be renting my own house for seven, eight hundred dollars. Um, so if I had a tiny house set up here, I had a shop, I had this room to fool around, this field, my family lives across the road, there's even more land, there's all kinds of enjoyment that I could have down here. Um, so I would gain, I think, more than I'm losing by uh, either selling my own house or um, renting it out. And I would have a cool experience in living in the small tiny house for a while, which I'm already building. It's over there uh, at my family's house. But what I'm thinking about doing with that one, if any of you have already watched those videos, I'm thinking about finishing that one, selling that one, and then making one that's more suited to my needs now. Um, I think people would really get a kick out of the idea of finishing that one up, taking people's input, getting it finished, and then selling it. And then I could make a really cool one that would just sit basically behind these buildings and have access to electricity and water, and then be in a really interesting place. So. I think that's pretty much it. That's everything I've done and sort of everything I'm thinking. Um, but who knows, you know, in a couple years I could be living here and, uh, but who knows. That's pretty much it. Who knows what else may happen on this channel as far as this house goes. By the time I get to the end of this house, I'll probably be working on another one. So as far as y'all watching, you probably won't be skipping any beats. But for me, this project is at an end. I'm really happy sort of with the way the whole thing went. Um, this was nothing compared to the other houses I've renovated. It was painting the house. It was upgrading an ele electric, kind of uh, some plumbing changes, appliances, a bunch of little small stuff. It wasn't this major rebuild. I don't think I cut a single board. You know, I didn't have to do any kind of framing or anything or drywall or it, it was a nice house. It just needed some things tightened up and getting it back into shape. So that's it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in a future video. Thanks for joining me. This morning I closed on another house.